Good day, class. Welcome to our lesson in understanding the self to continue with the discussion about the sexual self. And to conclude this topic, we are going to understand more about what love and attachment is and how is it connected with our sexuality. Although love, ang love po, ang salitang love, has so many definitions and it could mean a lot of things. But, pag-uusapan po natin ngayon something that is related to these topics. Attachment, intimacy, companionship, and also, we'll also talk about infatuation. So, according to studies, ito po ay nararanasan and is part of being a human. One characteristic of man that shows his being a person is his capacity to love. Kaya di ba, when someone is uh, parang manhid, there's this idiomatic expression in Tagalog na sinasabing, meron kang pusong bato. It means you don't know how to love. Because every one of us is said to be, we want to be loved and we want to love. Every person has a capacity to love. And also, Bernardo, the author, mentioned in 2016 that like man's rationality, freedom, and responsibility, his power to love have added to his being a person. Kaya po sa ating discussion, we'll try to define, no matter how difficult it is, to talk about love in the area of that is something related to the sexual self. But let's go first to the definition of love. Merong iba't ibang uri ng pagmamahal. And love is also defined in the Bible. You are going to read a lot of words or a lot about love in the Bible. And it's also mentioned that God is love. And God so loved us. So, in 1 Corinthians 13, ito po ay tinatawag na the love chapter na nabanggit din sa napakaraming mga movies. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy or dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. You can also read with me. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoice in the truth. It always trusts, always hopes, always perceived. So, ito po ay isa lamang pong um, group of uh, statements. However, napakalawak po ng application nito pagdating po sa pag-ibig. So, right now, we're going to learn about two types of love described by Meyer in 1993. Ito lamang po ang ating magiging concentration. But the the verse we, we just read is something that we can apply as we love. Kung meron man tayong partner sa ating family, our relationship with others. Uh, this is a very good verse that we can parang maging checklist natin if we are loving towards them. So, puntahan na natin yung two types of love described by Meyer. Meron daw po na tinatawag na passionate love at companionate love. So, what's the difference between the two? Ang passionate love is usually referred to or known as the romantic kind of love. Ito po yung grabing nararamdaman. Very high emotion. Intense. Pag sinabi natin intense, matinding longing to be one with another person. It's usually accompanied with feeling of ecstatic. Para kang sobrang saya. Ecstatic. Tenderness and elation. Yung meron ngang quotation na nagsasabing, Paano mo daw masasabing in love ang isang tao kapag siya ay nakangiti habang siya ay naghuhugas ng pinggan? Yung mga ordinary things na kanyang ginagawa seems to be extra special and that person seems to be extra happy. So, may dahilan po yun. Pwedeng 
that person is experiencing this passionate love and love includes even physiological arousal like increased heartbeat baka meron din kasamang blushing pag perspire feeling of intense excitement and in passionate love people often overlook faults and flaws and shortcomings and try to avoid conflicts kaya sa stage na ito usually po ito ay nangyayari or tinatawag na honeymoon stage wherein you just um you're in the early stage of falling in love and it's typically common in the early stage of a relationship with a partner you do not fully know yet so ito pong passionate love according to Meyer is generally short-lived naglalas lang po ito ng ilang mga ilang buwan okay so bakit kaya so sabi sa reason why it doesn't last that long because nasa ano ka lang nasa emotional high and you don't fully know you're not fully aware of the person's true character but kapag uh, yun nga tinatawag na familiarity at mas nakikilala mo na yung isang tao dun sometimes pumapasok yung balamang baka ay disillusion ka lang or sometimes frustration set in when you see already some flaws and uh, you have already some conflicts with the person the next type of love is called the companionate love so according to cooks ito naman pong companionate or compassionate love i must less intense ang feeling than the passionate love and it is characterized take note by friendly affection and a deep caring attachment based on familiarity of the loved one so dito naman the more you know the person the more you're comfortable the more you are familiar with the person you develop you have developed this friendly affection and deep caring attachment and Again, going back to Meyer, ang companionate love is the affection a person feels for those with whom their lives are intertwined. So, let's say you also feel this with a partner. Uh, meron kang tolerance for the partner's shortcomings. May tolerance ka na sa mga flaws niya and weaknesses niya. And the companionate love involves commitment and nurturing of the partnership at sinasabing ang companionate kind of love is more enduring and lasting than the passionate love and here there's an illustration that you can also uh, check itong idea ni Robert Sternberg sa social psychology na ang love daw could be illustrated in a triarchic dimension. So, dito sa triangle na ito, makikita natin ang tatlong mga basic component of love according to Sternberg. Yung passion, intimacy, and commitment. So, ano ba ang passion? What's the role of passion? Sabi ni Sternberg, passion is the motivational component that ignite romantic feelings, physical attraction, and desire for sexual interaction. So, the passion inside of you, yun daw yung create ng deeper desire to be together with the person or the object or the subject of your love. But, if it's a passionate uh, love, it could sometimes be compared to addiction. Kaya pala may kanta class about addict sa'yo. Because this passionate love, it's the effect on the person. Like, when you wake up in the morning, before you close your eyes at night, lagi siya ang laman ng yung isip. So, meron siyang parang, it's similar to a person who's addicted to something or to the person so meron siyang intense stimulation and satisfaction which induce powerful desire in a person 
Intimacy naman is the emotional component of love that encompasses the sense of bonding with a person. It involves feeling of warmth, sharing, and emotional closeness. So ito yung keyword dito, yung emotional closeness. Intimacy, the closeness ng, um, mo sa isang tao. Closeness physically, mentally, emotionally. You share the deepest darkest secrets of yours very open ka yung mga private feelings mo and thoughts to that person and the next one is the commitment this is the cognitive component of love and it pertains to the conscious decision to love someone and to remain in a relationship for long in spite of the difficulty or challenges it may entail at sabi pa ni Sternberg na Ang passion daw, it develops rapidly and intensely. But, later on in the relationship, kailangan ng intimacy and commitment for the relationship to go on. And, ito pong intimacy and commitment ay dapat patuloy na develop. And, it takes two to tango. So, both must work on commitment and intimacy. So, dito sa Sternberg's theory, it provides us a cognitive basis. Parang yung idea, no? Idrenon niya lang sa atin. Kung ano nga ba, or paano magta-transition yung passionate to companionate love. So, as we observe kanina sa triangle, passionate love is only composed of romantic feelings, feelings, physical attraction. So, nasa early stage yun. But... Okay, meron siyang rapid decline later on. So, as passion um, yan, declines, meron dapat na to continue to grow into a relationship. May intimacy and commitment. Dito po na develop naman yung companionate love. And commitment involves purposely investing in the relationship. Ano ba mga ini-invest natin? Yung time, yung emotion, uh, even mga self-sacrifices. So, regular, routine. Um, you are exclusive to the person you are committed to. There's a genuine closeness na hindi lang nakabase sa mood or emotion mo. So, now that we talked about the passionate and the companionate love, which could be both present in the different stages of your relationship or in the future relationship that you will have, alamin din muna natin some of the factors that affect yung pakiramdam natin that we are in love or we have fallen in love with someone. Well, ito po ay base lamang po sa studies and may not be exactly the reason or the factors why a person falls in love. So, these are ideas from some scientists and psychologists to why and uh, bakit nga ba in love ang isang tao. Although, falling in love, when and whom is actually a an unexplainable matter sometimes and it's really quite complex but here are just few explanations or ideas which could help us uh, ma-determine if uh, tayo nga ba ay na-in love na so people fall in love the reason could be is because the person wants to overcome loneliness and separateness. So, meron siyang inner desire to really uh, be one with another person. Yung mga broken-hearted, usually, you again, uh, you've experienced pain, but sometimes you still want to be in a relationship to overcome loneliness and separateness. Next, people desire a form of union in the deepest um, it's a deepest need of a human person. Yung my sense of security when you have formed a union. And another one is people fall in love when they are in their own solitariness and they long for a refuge in union and in love. And love relationship is an aspect of a person's social network instead of a cure to one's loneliness. On the other hand po, 
ito naman ay nagiging form of pagiging social being ng isang tao. Okay, yung connecting with another person in a very deep and intimate way. People fall in love also or most often, okay, to a person na you sometimes do not expect to fall in love into. So, aalamin natin yung mga reasons or factors that could shed light kung bakit nga ba ako nagkagusto sa taong ito. So, here are just four reasons or factors that could shed light on this topic. Ang pinakauna ay yung tinatawag na proximity. The nearness of one person to another. So, nangyayari po na minsan yung magkakaklase, uh, magkakatrabaho, magkakasama kayo sa church, sa isang banda, or... You are in a in, you are in the same organization. Uh, that could be a factor for you to uh, be attracted or to fall in love with someone who is in close contact or merong exposure sa yo. Okay, itong mere exposure effect na tinatawag. Ito yung repeated exposure to a stimuli that tends to increase an individual's liking for such a stimuli. Another is similarity. Another factor why people fall in love is similarity. Perhaps, although this is in contrast to the saying na opposite attracts, we actually or people often like those who have the same liking, beliefs, attitude, interests, and intellectual abilities. So, nagmimit kayo intellectually, emotionally, or marami kayong pagkakapareho. And even your level of physical attractiveness is the same sa point of view ninyong dalawa. And another is, perhaps you have similar goals, values, personality. Yan. So, not always, but this is a factor why people get along or do fall in love. Kasama na din yung edad, educational status, religious affiliation, and social and personal inclination. This is a factor, but not necessarily applicable to all. Kasi meron talagang magkaibang magkaiba. Kaya nga diba na feature yun sa mga movies. Yung isa mayaman, yung isa mahirap, yung isa considered as very attractive, at yung isa hindi naman magkaiba ng edad, magkalayo ng agwat. So, those are something na uh, unusual for us. Magkaiba. Uh, may mga differences. But, the typical reason or factor why people fall in love is because of similarity. Next is re- reciprocity. Ano tong repro- repro- reciprocity? Ang reciprocity is the um, idea that a particular person has a perception that the other individual is also interested with him or her. So, let's say, um, nafa-flatter ka, kinocompliment ka, both of you compliment each other, and yung effort mo when you show care is also being reciprocated. So, that could be a reason why people pursue the other person. Nakikita niya na, perhaps this person is also attracted or interested to me. At ang panghuli, physical attractiveness. So, this is considered a factor or it plays also a role in drawing people together. The physical beauty. So, either physical attractive people are sought after as friends or lovers physical beauty is perceived as more interesting poised sexy competent and socially skilled and uh, so many others so physical attractiveness also plays a role for you to um be to fall in love to someone so Yun po ang mga nakikitang factors. But of course, there are other reasons. Okay? And some of those are things na marahil hindi talaga ma-explain but could only be explained by the person who falls in love with the other person. So, itong tinatawag nating love and attachment. 
napakamahiwaga ng salitang love. But attachment is also close or ina-associate sa love. Because attachment means an intense bond that develops between two individuals. And it starts when we are just inside the tummy or inside the body of our parent. So, the love between our parents, uh, tayo po ay naging bunga ng pagmamahala ng ating mga magulang. That is, that attachment is rooted in infancy. So, according to uh, Sigmund Freud, infant becomes attached to the one who provides oral satisfaction. And to Erickson naman, physical comfort and sensitive care are keys to the establishment of trust and mistrust during the development of a person. So, nagsisimula pala sa infancy stage yung pagkakaroon ng um, security and attachment ng isang bata hanggang sa siya ay lumaki. That could affect yung kanya mga relationship. So, attachment as formed during infancy goes on throughout life and influence a partner's capacity or a person's capacity to develop loving attachment to a significant other. So, take note, securely attached adults, ito po yung lumaki sa isang mapagmahal na pamilya, Okay, buong pamilya usually are best prepared to establish a stable, satisfying relationship and do not fear abandonment. Kasi isa sa mga effect po ng broken homes, broken families, ay yung merong insecurity and laging may fear of abandonment ang isang partner. So that is something that should be addressed in a relationship. So people... Uh, involved in a relationship with someone from a broken family, that person needs to be um, reassured uh, and also meron siyang fear of abandonment that needs to be addressed. Okay? So, napag-usapan naman natin itong uh, love, romantic, the passionate, and then the companionate love. You are now in the stage wherein you are looking and you want to experience this companionate love and it starts with passionate love usually but you do a lot of things ano para makilala ang isang tao at ang tawag po doon ay yung courtship or dating and nowadays it has different forms so kayo po sa pagtatapos ng ating lessons sa understanding the sexual self ito po ay dapat nating tandaan Dating is um, kaya dapat tama. Dapat uh, alam natin kung why we are dating. So, here are the different functions of dating for different people. Ang iba, dating is just for fun. Okay. A source of enjoyment. Ang iba naman, dating is a source of status and achievement. Kung ikaw yung tao na lagi na lang uh, pinagtatawanan tuwing malapit na ang December. So, kapag uh, you're excited to be dating or to be in a relationship with someone, for you to, to tell your friends and those who know you that uh, you have achieved something. You are now in a relationship. You are now dating. So, you are comparing yourselves to others. Na, uh, that could be a sense of um, ligawin pala ako or I'm very attractive to be courted or para sagutin ako ng person na aking kinukort. So, dating is a source of status and achievement. Dating is also part of the socialization process. I remember an activity in college wherein uh, pinatry po kami to go to a friendly date in a youth camp para we will not be so curious about dating and we just eat dinner and we talk to the person um, yan. Para lang ma-experience what it feels to be dating. So, it's a socialization process. And in dating, it involves learning about intimacy. It involves learning about the other person, what he or she likes, what are his or her strengths and weaknesses, ano ba ang mga bagay na 
makakapagpaganda or maaring makasira ng isang relationship. So, nasa dating or courtship stage po yun. And dating, for some people, ginagamit itong opportunity for sexual exploration. So, take note class, hindi ito nire-recommend natin that you explore and indulge yourself into premarital sex because it is a very crucial stage at napakahalagang maintindihan natin before we get ourselves involved to another person physically or sexually. So, dating, uh, for some, yun po ay opportunity for sexual exploration. But it's not, uh, I do not recommend that one. But, of course, yung compatibility mo with the person, you can always talk about that. But you have to really be very careful. Ang salita lang po, ang keyword lang dito ay maghintay ng tamang panahon. Next is, dating can provide a chance for companionship through interaction and shared activities. In dati mag-isa ka lang, you now have someone to go out with to go to this particular place na kailangan mo nang makakasama. Dating experiences contribute to identity formation and development. Depende sa naging experience mo, good or bad, that contributes to your identity and development. And next is, dating can be mate sorting and selection. So, depende po ano, sa inyong may experience during the courtship period wherein you will be seeing the person in a closer or at least mas makikilala mo yung tao during the dating period na masasabi mo, am I going, or you can ask yourself, uh, am I going to spend the entire my entire lifetime with this person? Nakikita mo ba ang sarili mo na siya ang makakasama mo for the rest of your life? So, ito po pinag-usapan natin is something na very important. So, that's why this topic about the sexual self involves a lot of reflection. Pag-isipan, kasama na po ang mga relationships that we are part of. Particularly, yung ating pong mga uh, maaring maging future relationship with another person. So, this, uh, the sexual self forms a part of the building of our self-image, self-concept, attachment, intimacy, and sexual satisfaction. And these all plays essential roles in the formation of the self. So, I hope that you learned something for our, from our discussion today at sana po, ay mai-apply natin itong mga natutunan natin by being very careful and wise at pag-isipan natin yung mga bagay uh, na papasukan natin lalo na yung mga relationships that we are trying to establish. So, ingatan ng puso at patuloy din tayong matuto pa on how we can learn more about ourselves. Thanks for watching!